You're listening to Inside Israel Today with Gil Hoffman on the Land of Israel Network. Hello and welcome to Inside Israel Today here on the Land of Israel Network where we are approaching our election. It's only three weeks away, believe it or not, even if it appears at times to have not even really started uh, with so many people on vacation over here. But next week, the kids are going back to school, and uh, then we can really concentrate on politics. But meanwhile, one thing did happen. The entire election, what's gone on so far, looking back in history, everything will be forgotten, except for one thing, which is that last week, there was a historic interview of the head of the joint Arab list, Ayman Ode, with the premier, most veteran, most respected journalist in Israel, Nachum Barnea in Yediot Achronot, where Ayman Ode said for the first time that, as the first time ever, that an Arab leader said that he would be willing to take his party into a governing coalition. Now, he has conditions, but still, it is a very, very big deal. And that is why it is my honor and pleasure that Nachum Barnea took time from his busy, supposed-to-be-retired schedule to come with us here on the show. Nachum, bruchim abayim. Thank you. Bruchim abayim. Um, so, tell us behind the scenes, how did this interview end up happening? Yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, uh, Ayman Ode is the uh, chairman of the joint list uh, of our parties. They have four parties in the uh, in the uh, this uh, uh, in the list, and uh, he decided uh, to uh, uh, to not only to 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 take upon himself this kind of initiative, but also to do it in. A paper in a newspaper in Hebrew, and to do it without uh, any uh, any uh, consultations with his colleagues. So he did it on his own, and uh, and the uh, the outcome was very interesting. Uh, I believe in two separate fronts. One, the reaction of. Uh, Israeli Jewish parties uh, uh, in the uh, center left and in the right was very interesting. And B, and I believe it's much more important, the reaction of the uh, uh, of the Israelis in the Arab sector, how they reacted to it, and how the politicians in the Arab sector reacted to it. So, what were his conditions for joining a coalition? Number one, it has to be led by Benny Gantz. Yeah, he, he had four conditions, which are not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, are not uh, in the uh, sky. Uh, uh, conditions that could not be met on on uh, by uh, parties in the Israeli center left. One is to uh, revolution, uh, revolutionize all the uh, um, issue of. Uh, planning and building in the Israeli Arab sec- sector. The second is a, um, a major operation to fight uh, crimes in the Arab sector. Uh, the third is welfare and health to build a uh, a, 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 a major hospital in the Arab sector, uh, in a, one of the Arab uh, uh, cities, and to uh, raise the uh, retired uh, a, a, um, allocate, allocate for retirees and so on. Uh, in, uh, in you know uh, they have a financial uh, uh, plan for that, and uh, maybe the most important uh, uh, article here is. Uh, to resume the uh, negotiations with the PLO regarding resolving the uh, uh, Arab-Israeli uh, conflict. Now, those are conditions, some of them even Netanyahu could deliver. In the past, 
the condition so was that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict would be solved. They yeah, and Netanyahu in recent years uh, stopped talking about uh, the two-state solutions, and uh, he, in practical terms, he believed in uh, maintaining the status quo uh, as much or as long as possible, which means uh, uh, that the the freeze in negotiations between Israel and the PLO will continue. So this is where uh, right and left in Israel speak in different terms. And uh, here, uh, the, the, the art sector uh, can join the Israeli center left. But was Ayman Oda abandoning the, the Palestinians in favor of his Israeli Arab citizen constituency? in being willing to join a coalition before the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been solved? It's a good question. Look, uh, the Arab uh, sector is 20% of the Israeli population. We are talking about a major, a major uh, part of the Israeli society. And for more than 70 years, they were sitting, you know, in the, uh, on the edge, I would say. Uh, 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 they are part of, of the Israeli society. They, they uh, uh, vote in the, the elections. They are full Israeli citizens. But at the same time, they are not, they don't have the role that they, they could have in the Israeli economy. And uh, most important for all, in the Israeli politics. They, always, they are always in the opposition and not in, a, in an active opposition, because even the, uh, the, the, the Zionist uh, parties in the left are, are not willing to uh, include them in, in, their, uh, in their activities. So here comes Ayman Ode and says, we are willing to take part. Now, he it, it, it told me, and I believe he is right, that a, uh, a, a big majority, maybe maybe 80 percent, maybe 70 percent of the constituency, the Arab, the Arab Israeli constituency, uh, is uh, backing him, supporting him, while the politicians, uh, his colleagues, are against it because they are still um, feel that they owe. Uh, uh, owe something to the tradition, to the legacy of, of Israeli Arab politics, which, which, which put the Palestinian issue first. So, so you have here a, a very interesting debate, a discourse in the Arab sector. What, where should we head? What are we going to do? Are we going to be part of the Israeli society, or we are going to sit uh, uh, far away from the from the action and uh, speak all the time about the uh, Palestinian question. And why do you think that he made this big historic decision now out of all times? Oh, it's a good question. I believe that the, the immediate motive was, was clear. There is a, a tendency in the, in the Arab sector not to vote for the Knesset. Uh, it's interesting because uh, the Arab population is voting in very large uh, numbers for municipalities because they feel that by voting there, they can have an impact. They can influence the outcome. Then the mayor and the city council, which is elected, uh, are very influential uh, locally, but they don't tend to vote for the Knesset because they feel that their vote uh, will not lead to any action, will not have any impact. Um, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, election we, we had in, uh, in April, this April, uh, to the Knesset, uh, the rate went down to 49% in the Arab sector. As opposed to uh, among uh, the uh, Jews... Uh, uh, Among the two, it was, yeah, it was, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, around higher. 70. Yeah, uh, much higher. Now, 68.5% uh, was everyone together. Yeah, but if, if we should believe the polls, the rate is going uh, to be, or, or the number of, of uh, our voters will uh, even, uh, will be even 
smaller next month uh, in uh, on September 17th in the elections. So uh, because uh, he saw this apathy, this uh, reluctance to vote, he wanted to to uh, to, sh- to demonstrate to his voters, to his potential voters, that uh, in in the future uh, the Arab sector, the the politicians, the Arab sector, can have an impact by joining uh, uh, Zionist parties in order to form a, a center-left government. So he had a very good reason why he made this interview. And maybe this is the, uh, the, the the first reaction to reaction to to his interview uh, were very positive in the sense that uh, uh, in the uh, social media media uh, many our voters said maybe we will reconsider our decision not to not to go to the ballot. Actually, eighty percent, according to a poll. Eighty percent. Yeah, but uh, 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 you're right. But but but. Uh, 80% had a positive uh, reaction, but I don't think that 80% will go to the ballot. If they they get closer to 60%, they will be very 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 happy. Uh, the uh, the uh, our, I mean Ayman Oda and his and his colleagues. This is the reason, by the way, is that while uh, uh, his colleagues uh, 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 criticized him. They didn't break the ranks. They they understood that maybe uh, it will contribute to the uh, number of voters, and they will benefit out of it. Now, with those eighty percent, if they end up voting in much higher numbers, could this really decide the election and allow Netanyahu to be defeated? Uh, maybe I, I I don't make prophecies on something which will. Uh, will happen uh, less than one month uh, from now. Uh, it makes no sense. But but uh, and, and and also I don't believe that the, that the rate will be uh, much much higher. But but uh, it can make a difference in many ways. Uh, first of all, uh, we don't know what will happen to uh, to other parties in the center left. By the way, they can benefit also from the interview because uh, if more, uh, there are many Arabs who don't want to to vote for the uh, joint Arab list, but uh, are very are, are are willing to to vote for uh, uh, other parties like the Labour Party or what we call the uh, Democratic Camp, which is basically a more leftist, liberal, progressive uh, party or to blue and white, which is the major uh, center-left party now. So, so everybody can benefit out of it. But, but we, we should wait and see. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, going to make any, any, any uh, position now. It's too, too, too early, much too early. Now, were you surprised by blue and white's reaction where, where Benny Gantz had to basically say uh, they're not a Zionist party, they don't recognize Israel as a Jewish state, we can't cooperate with them? Yes, I believe that the, uh, the reaction was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, unwise. And, and you have to understand why. Um, it's true that in the joint Arab list, you have one fraction uh, called Balad, uh, which is uh, very, very... A blunt, vocal, anti, uh, um, anti-Israel in in their uh, basic ideology. Uh, it's true that at the same time they, you know, they swear to to uh, follow every uh, uh, every law and they make speeches with uh, the, the picture of Theodore Herzl behind them. So it's not exactly uh, the rhetorics are much uh, uh, more extreme than the uh, than the uh, uh, action in the in the classic. But 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 they are a problem. But 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 uh, but but the rest of the Arab list is willing to cooperate. Now uh, uh, the basic reaction of uh, uh, the blue and white uh, party. 
uh, was motivated by, by the fact that this party is also a coalition between uh, three uh, separate lists, which uh, one of them is very, very um, uh, hawkish in their, in their basic views. They are people who, who came out of the Likud party because they don't like Netanyahu, but they endorse the ideology of the Likud party. So, so uh, Gantz said that uh, he cannot, he cannot uh, have a, a kind of resistance in his own uh, party, and this was the reason he made this clumsy um, um, uh, rea- uh, reaction. Uh, I, I, I guess he, he, in a, he regrets it because uh, by, 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 by making this uh, statement, he didn't help Ode to uh, encourage more Arabs to vote. And these Arabs are voting for the same bloc, uh, the, and, and uh, they are uh, maybe the, uh, the only hope uh, Gantz has to replace Netanyahu. Okay, so now after we've spoken about this one historic thing that happened in the election, I guess more in general before we're done here, how does this election compare to the other 21 that you've covered or so uh, (laughs) over the last 50 years that you've been covering (laughs) politics and big issues here, Nachum Barnea? Yeah, in in the world of of the Russian uh, novelist Tolstoy, all elections are miserable, but each of, uh, <laughs> each of them are are, separate, are, are different in in in, uh, in the way they are conducted. Yeah, this election is uh, was uh, imposed on the Israeli public. There is no enthusiasm. Uh, uh, the, most Israelis don't understand why the political uh, uh, system couldn't find a way to form a government after the elections in April. So you have this kind of a, a, a alienation, which is very, very dangerous to our democracy. But this is the fact. Uh, people are, are not enthusiastic about uh, the election, they are not involved. It's not only the fact that you mentioned that people are on vacation and, uh, and uh, they are not, uh, they didn't to the finish, uh, let's say, uh, they, they, uh, the kids are still at home. Uh, we are going to start uh, the school year only in September. So, so it's true, but it goes beyond that. So this is one, one problem in this election. The other problem is that uh, uh, the basic issue is Netanyahu. Uh, people, will, will, uh, people who, who believe that he should be, uh, continue to be the prime minister uh, naturally are going to, to vote for the Likud, and people who are who are um, um, are unhappy was uh, uh, the fact that he he is uh, uh, under indictment uh, for corruption, and with the uh, uh, the fact that he is for the last ten years he was the dominant person in Israeli politics will vote for other other parties or will stay at home. We'll see. Should be fascinating. Nachum yeah. Barnea, the uh, preeminent columnist in Israel, veteran journalist now for more than 50 years, and uh, the person who has influenced this election now uh, more than anyone by conducting this historic interview with Ayman uh, Oda. Thank you so much for coming here on Inside Israel today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, listeners. We'll have more after the break. I call for a vote. I'm not voting for her. Only an idiot would vote for me. Why well, didn't vote for you? You should know who to vote for. Who are you going to vote for in the upcoming election? Hi, this is Josh Haston, host of Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network. Full election news and analysis that you're not going to get anywhere else. That's the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. Keep it locked in. If you vote for me, all of your wildest dreams will come true. That was Nachum Barnea, the preeminent journalist in Israel, who is a columnist for the Yadir Renault newspaper, writes the top column in the newspaper. And really, honestly, he, he told me he got his start 
already in, in 1967 as a journalist. Uh, it's been more than 50 years, and he's been there to watch the history as it happens. So it, it's one thing when I tell you, I've only been doing this for 20 years, that the interview that he had with Ayman Oda was a big deal. It's another thing when he says it because he has a broader historical perspective. And uh, there has never been an Arab leader that's taken a party in a coalition in Israel. And the effect of that is that the Arab residents of Israel have been underserved. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter where you are on the political map in Israel. Um, it can't be denied that Arab towns don't look like Jewish towns. Arab streets don't look like Jewish streets. Arab roads don't look like Jewish roads. Is that racist? Absolutely not. It looks completely and obviously racist. But it's not racism. It is politics. The way it works in a parliamentary system is the parties that join the coalition get, the parties that don't, don't get. And there have been plenty of governments that would have been willing to have an Arab party in their coalition. And they have always refused. It has always been the leaders of the Arab sector in Israel who have not served their people well, who have made a decision that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that may or may not ever be solved has to be solved before these people are going to be helped. And here you have the leader of every Arab running for Knesset in a realistic slot, except for one, saying, I am going to take this party in the coalition if it's formed by Benny Gantz. And if he meets conditions that are not nearly as difficult as, as that one condition was of solving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It can happen, unless Netanyahu becomes prime minister, which is still the most likely thing to happen, obviously. But now you've got to do the math differently. In the polls before, we would say, okay, well, uh, there are 55 to 57 seats on the right, not counting Victor Lieberman, who's got 8 to 10 seats. And then you've got the left, uh, which has 47 seats or so, uh, but you can't count the Arabs and it's too complicated. Um, now you're going to have to look at that differently. If you have blue and white right now, they're getting 31, 32 seats in the polls. And the, the Democratic Union is getting about eight seats in the polls. That's 40. And the Labor Party getting five. Okay, that's 45. Well, uh, the Joint Arab List is getting 10 seats in the polls. You Now you're 55. A Victor Lieberman could he really join a coalition with Ayman Ode? Does he hate Netanyahu that much that he would change his ideolo ideology completely? That seems to be going a bit too far. But then again, we've seen things in this election that no one expected ever to happen before. So uh, history is happening as we speak, ladies and gentlemen. Our society is changing. The people here are, are, are changing. Um the points of view that there are here are, are getting softened. People are becoming less political, more accepting, more willing to work together in ways that nobody would have dreamed of before. If you want to see hyperpolarization, hyper, that's the word again? Hyperpolarization, go to America. If you want to see the opposite, if you want to see people here becoming l less polarized, come to Israel. And uh, I think those words come to Israel, which are pretty common words to hear in the Land of Israel Network, are a great way of ending this show. Uh, so uh, thank you for being with us on another exciting edition of Inside Israel Today here on the Land of Israel Network on thelandofisrael.com. Have a great day. Bye-bye. I have seen everything in the days of my vanity, says the wise of all kings. There's a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there's a wicked man who lives long in his evil. Be not overly righteous, warned Solomon, and be not overly wise. Why should you bring desolation upon yourself? Well, I'm not worried that I'm overly righteous, and I certainly don't think I'm overly wise, but I am Rob Mike Foyer, and this is The Jewish Story. 
Join Rav Mike Foyer for the best Jewish history podcast, The Jewish Story, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.org.